vision, seeing with our eyes the people and the things around us, our reality. In a mirror, seeing ourselves and where we have come from, our past. Through the Hubble telescope, seeing 12 billion light years away, unimaginable. For the vision impaired, seeing through our other senses. Vision, an ability or imagination to think about or plan the future for the way things might be. Before we discuss Vision 2020 with our lineup of respected and highly motivated guest pharmacists, let's take a moment to explain FIP and the Community Pharmacy section. FIP, through associations and individual pharmacists and pharmaceutical scientists, and representing 3 million practitioners, brings together people committed to improving global health. One of the several interest groups and sections of FIP is the Community Pharmacy section, CPS. The section seeks to be another touch point for community pharmacists to help them in the delivery of medicines, health products and services that will improve medicine use and advance patient care. One recent project developed by the section has been Vision 2020, led by Emma Polino of Portugal, a look into the near future of and to highlight the key components in community pharmacy practice. In this video, 10 internationally recognized pharmacists will speak to each of these key components. At the end of the video, we will post a web link to the references and resources associated with each topic as provided by our guests. The Community Pharmacy section sincerely thanks our guests for sharing their time, knowledge and opinions on the CPS Vision 2020. My name is Warren Meek, President of C7 Consulting, and I am pleased to be the narrator for this video. Our next guest is Dr. Anna Westerling in Finland. We are talking with Anna about information and communication technology. Thanks for joining us today. Anna, can you identify some of the key benefits to either patients or pharmacists with the proper use of a robust information and communication technology? As a patient, I would expect that the quality of the service is equal in any community pharmacy where I visit. Uh, in Finland, we have just implemented the electronic prescribing system and I think the patients already recognize the benefits of this system because they can choose the pharmacy where they visit and they don't have to carry the paper prescriptions with them and they can lose them and so on. And I believe that patients' uh, responsibility and involvement will increase in futures because patients will demand more and more services in the internet to support self-care and self-management of chronic diseases. And I think there is room for patient care innovations which potential has not been well utilized. Also, the social media provides new opportunities because of its attainability, educational opportunities and its possibilities for interprofessional collaboration. And as a pharmacist, I think we have an ethical mission that we do everything we can for the patient's well-being. And my opinion is that without proper ICT systems, this is not possible. And one of the most important issues in this context is the medication safety. We know that medication errors cause a lot of harm to the patients and we should also develop our ICT systems from this viewpoint. Uh, the system could, for example, alert overdosing, especially with child patients or alert when we are dispensing high alert medications to the patients. And, uh, it is not only the technological capabilities of the ICT which are important, but also their implementation and use. Anna, we sometimes hear that ICT is expensive to install and to train and to use, but surely the value must outweigh the costs? Yes, I think that we have no choice because the world is changing very quickly and we have to develop our profession as well. And I think if you are able to create tools for or applications that work well and eliminate our tasks, which for example are based on memory, I think we will have cost-effective processes. 
And I think good examples in community pharmacy setting are the electronic prescribing systems and robots for automated stock handling. And important thing is that these tools also improve medication safety. I think the safety issues and the quality of patient care in community pharmacy are the most important values, but also the effective processes are valuable financially. So ICT is more than just better and faster processing. Yes, because uh, of course that when we use effectively ICT, we may save time, but we should uh, spend this time with the patient and not just uh, make more dispensing with this uh, time. Anna, in this era of professional collaboration, what are the easiest tools that pharmacists could be using? Uh, in order to provide services, um, ICT solutions are important tools to implement individual care plans, patient monitoring, comprehensive medication reviews, and sharing patient information between the healthcare and community pharmacies. And also there are significant opportunities for the use of ICT in the disease management and risk assessment. And I think a future research should evaluate benefits of technology, especially in the long-term care, as well as clinical outcomes and cost effectiveness evaluation. And also databases, for example, medication during kidney dysfunction or pregnancy are more common. And of course, different countries have different IT systems and more or less different service concepts. Uh, however, I think we should share our experiences and learn from each others. Is there a role for pharmacists in the developing and implementation of pharmacy-specific ICT? Uh, there should be a role and the development process should be iterative so that the pharmacists uh, should be able to comment and give advice or requests for the IT people. And the lack of skills among community pharmacists may limit the implementation of new technologies to provide patient care. And if the tools are difficult to use, no one will adopt them which means that the financial effort has been useless. And it is important that the innovations are based on a sufficient understanding of pharmacy practice problems and their needs. If the development process is led by people outside of the profession, the professional needs and strategic priorities should be considered as well. Anna, what is keeping us from quicker implementation of community pharmacy appropriate ICT? In Europe, the markets are very small because of variation of languages and different financial and remuneration systems. And this usually leads to poor quality of the systems. And of course, the biggest barrier is the money, like always. And in my own research, I found that community pharmacy IT developments also lack research, organization, leadership, and user involvement in the processes. And those who are responsible for ICT development in the community pharmacy sector should create long-term strategies that are in line with community pharmacy service development strategies. And this development should be guided by pharmacy professions' own visions and strategies concerning patient care services. And also, I think the attitude of pharmacy is important and their skills. We have different generations working in a community, and I think it's clear that the young pharmacists have different skills and maybe even different attitude in utilizing ICT. Anna, what's your final thought for us on ICT today? I think we should utilize ICT more than we do now. We have challenges and with ICT we can respond to them. Thanks, Anna.
nice slingshot, blue man.